Hello! The objective of this video is about the vocabulary of parallel lines cut by a transversal. I'm not going to go into any examples, I'm just doing the vocabulary in this video. Here we have two parallel lines. How do I know they're parallel? Well, they look parallel, but they also have these little arrow, extra arrowheads there letting me know that that's a symbol saying that these two lines are parallel. If I had had another set of lines out there that looked parallel, one might be marked with one set of arrows while the other one would be marked with a second set of arrows like that. But those, those are the symbols to let me know that those two lines are parallel. They may also write A parallel B. Two lines like that lets you know that they're parallel. This line here, the blue line cutting through the two parallel lines, any line that cuts through two parallel lines is known as a transversal. And there are properties of the angles created by this transversal cutting through two parallel lines. And there's a lot of vocabulary involved. So this video is all about that vocabulary. First, we're going to take back a bit and look at vertical angles. Whenever you have two lines crossing, any two lines, any angle, two straight lines crossing, they're going to form four angles. And angles that are opposite of each other, the angles that are opposite of each other form vertical angle pairs. Vertical angle pairs. Now I say vertical angles, lots of times teachers are going to say vertical angles, but when they say this, it really is a pair of angles. One and four, the two red angles, are going to be paired up. 2 and 3 are vertical pairs. And there's a property of vertical angles that vertical angles are equal to each other. 2 and 3 are going to be the same measure. 1 and 4 are going to be the same measure. Now it might make sense to call 1 and 4 vertical because they're up and down. and We're used to calling vertical up and down. But it may not make sense for the 2 and 3 until you take this board and go like this. And it kind of makes sense that those are also vertical angles that are also equal. Alright. Now, when you've got a set of parallel lines, the inside of the parallel lines, inside of them, is called the interior. Outside of the parallel lines is called the exterior. So these are important to remember. Interior angles are all four of these angles inside the interior. Exterior are these four that are outside of the parallel lines. Now, there's something called corresponding angles. And again, this is corresponding angles, and they are pairs, just like vertical angles are pairs. And the definition of corresponding angles is if I were to take this transparency of that, that crossing lines there, slide it along the transversal, you would notice how angle 1 matches up with angle 5, angle 2 matches up with angle 6, angle 4 with angle 8, and angle 3 with angle 7. Notice how when I slide up and down here, angle 2 is equal to angle 6. Angle five, 1 is angle 2 equal fi angle 5, and so on down the line here. These angles are called corresponding angles, the ones that match up with the same location on the opposite parallel line. So angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding. Angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding. 4 and 8, 3 and 7. Angle 1 is going to be equal to angle 5, angle 2 is going to be equal to angle 6, but angle 1 or 2 are not necessarily going to be equal. Angle 3 and 7 are going to be equal, angle 4 and 8 are going to be equal. The next vocabulary is alternate. We talked about the interior and exterior in the last one there. Now we're talking about alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are inside the parallel lines, so it's got to be one of these four. And they are pairs, they are paired just like the other ones. But alternate also means they have to be on opposite sides of the transversal and on opposite parallel lines. Angle 3 is on this parallel line, 
line A, angle 6 is on line B. They are on opposite sides of transversal T. That makes angle 3 and angle 6 alternate interior angles. So are angles 4 and 5. And if I were to take the transparency there and bring it down, you find that 4 and 5 are going to be equal. 3 and 6 are going to be equal. Alternate exterior angles. Same thing as the interior. They have to be on opposite parallel lines, A or B. And they have to be on opposite sides of the transversal, but they have to be outside of the parallel lines. 1 and 8 are alternate exterior pair. 2 and 7 are alternate exterior pair. And again, alternate interior and alternate exterior, those pairs are going to be equal. Or another better word would be congruent. Alright. There's also, this, this one's kind of new to me, the name of same side interior angles. They are inside of the parallel lines, they're in the interior, and they're on the same side of the transversal. Opposite parallel lines, but on the same side of the transversal. So that makes 3 and 5 and 4 and 6. 4 and 6 are uh, alternate interior, sorry, three, 4 and 6 are same side interior. 3 and 5 are same side interior. And the, this relationship is different from the others in that these angles are not going to be equal. However, they will add up to 180 degrees. If I add 3 and 5 together, I will get 180 degrees. There's another vocabulary word. Two angles that add up to 180 degrees are called supplementary angles. Now, here's a brief screen that kind of wraps everything into one here, other than those vertical angles. Uh, again, this is just vocabulary. I hope to shoot another video where I go through examples of how they incorporate math and algebra into these properties. Thank you.